Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into, cut my wife cheating with my boss on camera. Come, let's explore these real life stories. The sun was already starting to set as I stood by the huge window of my office, overlooking the bustling city below. Today had been a whirlwind. For 25 years, I'd been with this company, pouring every ounce of my dedication and sweat into my work. And today, it was going to pay off. I glanced down at the invitation lying on my desk. It was a sleek card, embossed with golden letters, John Miller, in recognition of 25 years of exemplary service, we are honored to present you with the employee of the Quarter Century Award. Quarter Century sounds fancy, doesn't it? A chuckle escaped my lips. I never thought I'd be at a job long enough to get such an award. My fingers lightly traced the edge of the card. I hadn't told Lisa yet. I wanted to surprise her. I imagined the proud look in her eyes, the way she'd hug me tight, whispering in my ear, I always knew you were the best. We'd been through thick and thin, from the time when we could barely afford rent to now, living comfortably in our dream home. This award was as much hers as it was mine. A buzz from my phone pulled me out of my daydream. It was a reminder for the rehearsal for tomorrow's ceremony. Can't be late for that, I murmured to myself, quickly gathering my things. The office was mostly empty by now, a few colleagues waved at me as I made my way out, congratulating me for my big day tomorrow. I smiled, nodding in appreciation. It felt good, this recognition. It felt earned. The drive home was smooth, traffic was lighter than usual, and I found myself humming along to the radio. My plan was simple, get home, tell Lisa about the award, maybe even go out for a celebratory dinner. I'd been so wrapped up in work lately that we hadn't had much time together, just the two of us. As I turned into our street, something odd caught my attention. As I pulled into my street, an unusual sight caught my eye, a sleek, silver car with tinted windows. Not just any car, but one I recognized, Mr. Gray's car, my boss's car. Why would he be here? I pondered aloud. It wasn't like him to make house calls, and I definitely hadn't invited him over. Parking my car, a sense of unease took hold of me. I decided to check our home security system via my phone, only to find the cameras were off. Odd, I thought, Lisa never turns them off before entering the house. A memory flashed, I recalled an old video system I'd set up when we first moved in, more for fun than anything else, a hobby I picked up during one of my business trips. Deciding to check it before going inside, with every passing second, my heart pounded louder. Why was I so nervous? What was I expecting to find? I sat in my car, nervously fidgeting with the old laptop I'd kept in the trunk. Booting it up, I opened the video files from the old security system. My hands were clammy, my mind raced with a thousand thoughts. The first few clips seemed normal. Lisa was in the garden, tending to her roses, her favorite pastime. It was coming to see her so engrossed in her world. But then, the timestamp showed the hour when I was deep in a meeting. Mr. Gray's car pulled into our driveway. He stepped out, looked around, before heading to the front door. Lisa greeted him, not with the cordial nod you'd give a colleague of your husband, but with a warm embrace. A cold shiver ran down my spine. They moved into the living room, their conversation was muted, but their body language spoke volumes. They laughed, shared a bottle of wine, the same wine Lisa and I had been saving for a special occasion. At one point, they danced, her head resting on his shoulder, both lost in the music and in each other. It felt as though someone had punched me in the gut. This wasn't just a casual visit, this was intimate, personal. I closed the laptop abruptly, gasping for air. My mind refused to accept what my eyes had just seen. I drove aimlessly for what felt like hours, trying to process everything. Every memory, every sweet moment shared with Lisa was now tainted with doubt. Was our entire marriage a lie, or had something changed along the way? Seeking some solitude, I ended up at a small park we used to visit when we were younger. It was our spot, a place where we shared dreams, made plans, and promised to be each other's forever. The irony wasn't lost on me. Sitting on a bench, I tried to recall any signs, any hints that might have indicated Lisa's change of heart. 
but all I remembered were the good times. Sure, we had our disagreements, but what couple didn't? Nothing that would warrant this kind of betrayal. My phone buzzed with a message from Lisa, Hey love, where are you? I made your favorite for dinner. Hope you'll be home soon. I stared at the message, feeling a strange mix of anger, sadness, and disbelief. How could she act so normal? Did she think I wouldn't find out, or did she not care? Tears threatened to spill, but I held them back. I needed to think, to plan my next move. I couldn't confront her without evidence, and I certainly didn't want to make a scene. I needed answers, but first, I needed to gather my thoughts. The sun was barely out, casting a dim golden hue over the city as I started my day. I hadn't slept much. Every time I closed my eyes, the images of Lisa and Mr. Gray replayed in my mind. It was torture. As I got into my car and drove to the office, I could feel a deep sense of unease. Every red light, every pedestrian seemed like an obstacle, delaying me from finding some answers to the chaos that had become my life. I had always taken pride in my office, a corner spot with a panoramic view of the city. But today, the skyline, usually a source of inspiration, felt mocking. Instead of focusing on work, I found myself watching the people down below, wondering how many of them carried secrets of their own. When lunchtime rolled around, I knew I couldn't face the office canteen. I texted Roger, need to talk. Usual spot in 20. His reply was instant, be there. Our usual spot was a small, out-of-the-way cafe where we'd shared countless conversations over the years. It was private, away from prying eyes and eavesdropping ears. As I sat waiting for Roger, the aroma of fresh coffee beans being ground felt oddly comforting. When Roger arrived, his face was lined with concern. You look like hell, he said, ordering us both a coffee. Taking a deep breath, I relayed the events of the previous evening. He listened intently, only interrupting to ask clarifying questions. Once I finished, he took a long sip of his coffee, seemingly collecting his thoughts. Before you confront Lisa, he finally said, you need undeniable evidence. Something she can't refute. I nodded, recalling the grainy security footage. But how, he hesitated for a moment. A private investigator. It's the best shot we've got. The idea seemed drastic, straight out of a detective novel, but I was desperate. Roger quickly jotted down a number. Her name's Clara. She's discreet and the best in the business. Call her. With Roger's encouragement, I dialed Clara that evening. She had a calm, collected voice that instantly put me at ease. After explaining my situation, she agreed to take on the case. The next few days were a whirlwind of emotions. Clara was in constant touch, updating me on her findings. She tracked Lisa's movements, her meetings with Mr. Gray, and even their conversations. Each revelation was like a dagger to my heart. However, one evening, as I was poring over some reports, my phone buzzed with a message from Clara, urgent meeting needed. Tomorrow, 9 a.m. my office. The weight in my chest grew heavier. What had she found? I arrived at Clara's office promptly at 9 a.m. The air was thick with anticipation. Her office was located in a nondescript building, ensuring her client's utmost privacy. The room itself was dimly lit, with walls adorned with various awards and certifications. However, one particular wall caught my attention. It was covered in photos and strings connecting various clues, like a scene from a detective film. Clara, a tall woman with sharp features and an even sharper mind, gestured for me to sit. Without wasting any time, she turned on a projector. The screen lit up with images of Lisa and Mr. Gray, some of them in places I recognized, like our favorite restaurant and the park where we had our first date. She began narrating her findings. Over the past few days, I've observed a pattern. They meet up at least three times a week. It's not just casual encounters, John. She played an audio clip. Hearing Lisa's voice was painful, but what was more painful were the words she spoke. Her intimate tone with Mr. Gray and the laughter they shared. They discussed future plans, vacations, and even mused about a world where they didn't have to hide. I. I felt a rush of emotions, anger, sadness, disbelief. 
how long has this been going on? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. From what I've gathered. It's been at least a year, Clara responded. A year, a whole year of deception. I struggled to process it all. Did you find anything on what they're planning next? Clara hesitated for a moment before continuing, there's an upcoming business trip. Both Lisa and Mr. Gray are booked for it, but the peculiar thing is they've booked a single room. It felt like the room was closing in on me. Clara handed me a folder containing all the evidence, photos, recordings, and even some of their message exchanges. You deserve to know the truth, John. I'm sorry it had to be this way. I nodded, barely holding back tears. Thank you, Clara. As I left her office, the reality of it all sank in. I had to confront Lisa, but the thought of facing her was daunting. How do you confront someone you've loved and trusted for over two decades? I drove around the city, lost in thought. Nightfall approached, and the city lights seemed to blur together. I pulled over, gazing at the river. The shimmering water reflected my own tumultuous emotions. Taking a deep breath, I picked up my phone and dialed Lisa's number. It was time for answers. The ringing of the phone seemed to last an eternity. When Lisa finally picked up, her voice was light, unsuspecting. Hey, John. How was your day? Hearing her voice brought a flood of memories, our wedding, vacations, shared laughter, and dreams for the future. But now, it all seemed tainted. I took a deep breath to steady myself. Lisa, we need to talk. Can you come home now? There was a pause. She must have sensed the urgency in my voice. All right, I'm on my way. The waiting was torturous. Every tick of the clock felt like an echo in the vast emptiness of our home. The door creaked open and Lisa walked in, concern evident on her face. John, what's going on? I spread out the evidence Clara had given me on the table, the photos, the audio recordings, the messages. Lisa's face turned pale as she took in the undeniable truth before her. Tears welled up in her eyes as she began, John, I, but I raised my hand to stop her. Just tell me why, Lisa. After all these years, why? She looked down, struggling to find her words. It started innocently. Business meetings turned into lunches and then dinners. We found comfort in each other's company. I never meant for it to go this far, John, but over time, the line between friendship and something more blurred. I am so, so sorry. I could feel my heart shattering, but a strange calmness settled over me. We built a life together, Lisa. Shared dreams, made promises, and you threw it all away for a fleeting moment of happiness. She sobbed, I know I messed up. I know there's no excuse for what I did. I just... I wish I could turn back time. But some things, once broken, can't be fixed. The trust that was the foundation of our relationship had crumbled. Lisa, I think we need to take some time apart. I need to process this, heal, and decide what's next. She nodded, tears streaming down her face. I understand, John. I'll move out for a while. The following days were a blur. Lisa moved in with her sister, and I was left in our home, surrounded by memories of better times. Friends and family reached out, offering their support, but the loneliness was overwhelming. I decided to sell our home and start afresh. With every item I packed, I let go of a piece of the past. It was painful but necessary. I realized that sometimes the hardest part of moving on is accepting that the other person already did. The finality of signing the divorce papers was heart-wrenching but also marked a new beginning. I embarked on a journey of self-discovery, traveling, and meeting new people. And though the pain of betrayal never truly goes away, in time, it becomes a scar, a reminder of battles fought and lessons learned. After everything that's unfolded, I find myself standing at a fork in the road. The weight of the decision I need to make feels like a stone in my chest. You see, some say love is forgiving and that time can mend the deepest of wounds. Others argue that certain betrayals are unforgivable, leaving scars that never truly heal. My heart still aches when I think of Lisa. The love, memories, and years we shared can't simply be erased. 
I sometimes wonder if we can rebuild, start anew, and perhaps find a way back to each other. But then, the pain of her betrayal, the hurt I felt that day when I watched that footage, hits me like a tidal wave. You, dear viewer, have been with me through this tumultuous journey, witnessing every raw emotion and every twist and turn. And so, I ask you, what do you think? Should I consider giving Lisa a second chance, believing in the power of love and forgiveness? Or do you think what she did was utterly unacceptable, a violation that no amount of time or remorse can mend? I eagerly await your thoughts. Your insight might just be the beacon of light I need in this storm. If you love this story and crave more tales of love, betrayal, and healing, don't forget to subscribe for more from Cheating Stories.